Toto's Africa. Invariably, the two words used to answer the question, what is one of the best songs ever made? But how did a song about a love affair in and with Africa, written in the 80s by a band from Los Angeles who had never been, become one of the most celebrated songs of all time? This is the story, the origin, the resurgence of the once thought unworthy song, Toto's Africa. Before David Page begins to compose Africa, he is first moved by what he is seeing on the television. Dreadful images of families and children living in horribly impoverished conditions, air in UNICEF commercials, advocating charity and the need for help, not just in Africa, but all over the world. Millions of children in over 100 countries dream that somewhere they'll find the help they need to walk again or to keep from going blind. David, being compelled by this, immediately becomes inspired and rushes to his Yamaha CS80 keyboard. He says, I sat down and started playing and the chorus just came out like magic. I remember after I'd sung I Bless the Rains Down in Africa, I just stopped and went, wait a minute, I might be a little talented, but I'm not that talented. God's using me for an instrument here, but wait because David has more to add about his fascination with Africa than just UNICEF commercials. David's love affair with Africa started even further back. He continues, One of the reasons I was in a rock band was to see the world. As a kid, I'd always been fascinated by Africa. I loved movies about Dr. Livingstone and missionaries. I went to an all-boys Catholic school and a lot of the teachers had done missionary work in Africa. They told me how they would bless the villagers, their Bibles, their books, their crops, and when it rained, they bless the rain. That's where the hook line, I bless the rains down in Africa, came from. They said loneliness and celibacy were the hardest things about life out there. Some of them never made it into the priesthood because they needed companionship. So I wrote about a person flying in to meet a lonely missionary. It's a romanticized love story about Africa, based on how I'd always imagined it. The descriptions of its beautiful landscape came from what I'd read in National Geographic. Furthermore, David's song wasn't well received by the band even jokingly suggesting David Page hangs on to it for his solo album. Toto, as a band, has a bit of a side joke when it comes to the songs that didn't fit the mold. Anytime a song was suggested that maybe wouldn't make the cut, they would say to each other, save that for your solo album. Guitarist Steve Lukather had so little faith in the song that he had this to say about it. If this is a hit, I'll run naked down Hollywood Boulevard. Dave, man, Africa, we're from North Hollywood. What the fuck are you writing about? I bless the rains down in Africa. Are you Jesus, Dave? Not only having reservations about the song, but even the music video too which as we all know is touted as one of the greatest music videos ever created. Steve continues to say, Then we made a video that was so full of cheese, they built this stage that looked like a pile of giant books and stood us on top of it. You could see me laughing. I hated videos and I hate the 80s for the mullet that I used to have and the clothes they put us in to make us look androgynous. We are not that bad. On the cover of the single, I have a look on my face that says, I'm gonna kill you. And now I have to sit here and eat my words because Africa has become a standard and I'm very proud of David for it. For whatever reason, the band allowed for Africa to be on their next album. 
and it was a hit. Columbia Records calls the band to tell them they're playing the song in discos and clubs. Africa started as a small cult hit and began to climb the charts. The band recalls looking at each other in amazement. Africa was, and still is, unstoppable. Sadly, even though he lost the bet, guitar Steve Lukather didn't run naked down Hollywood Boulevard as he said he would. And as for David, the songwriter who felt a mystical presence giving him the song, who was convinced it was worth something, who dreamed as a child of going to Africa, finally got to perform there. David says, we finally played Africa, performing in Cape Town and Johannesburg. I went on a safari through a game reserve. People had heard the song and asked, so when were you in Africa? I admitted I'd never been there till now. They said, but you describe it so beautifully. That just warms my heart. Once in a while, stories fall into our laps that remind us that it's okay to believe in things. Have a little faith in yourself and challenge others on what can and can't happen in this world, even if it's just a song.